the potential outcome model is one way of formalizing and thinking about causal inference. It's not the only way, but we're going to try to explain this. And they start by defining the causal effect, and they use the symbol delta as being what you will have with the intervention. You symbolize that by y1 and subtract what you will have without the intervention, y0. So for example, y1 could be the salary you have with education. And y0 would then be the salary you would have had without education. So the difference between this, these two is the causal effect of, of education. And this is for one individual, so you could have i, i for individual i here. So that's well, the, the starting point. The problem is that one of these variables will always be unobserved. You can't have a person with education and no education at the same time. You can't give the pharmaceutical to a person and not give the pharmaceutical to a person at the same time. So you, there's no way you will have information that is necessary to estimate this. But it's still a useful starting point. But that's the basic problem of causal inference. That one variable will always be missing here. Basic problem. Unobserved variables here. One of these will always be unobserved. So one possible solution then could be to focus on averages because there's, it is possible to find a, a group of people with education and a group of people without education and compare those people. So one possible solution, more formally, would be fo focus on the expected effect. The expected causal effect would be then the expected value of y1, that is the expected value for those with education or with intervention, and subtract the expected effect without the intervention. Now, the problem with that again is that we don't really have that information even. Because if you look at it and you look at evidence, what, what do we really have? We, so, so what we have is the following. We do have, I'm going to say have, this is the information we have when we look at a world. We know the value of, you, you know, the salary, for example, or we know the blood pressure of the people who got the intervention. So we do know why one for those people given that you have received the treatment that information we know and this is just a symbolizes that given that d is equal to one meaning you have received the intervention then we know the value of for example your salary for those people we do not know so we do not have the following what is the value of y1 for those people who do not get the intervention, d is equal to zero. So for those people who did not get education and for those people who did not get their pharmaceutical, we don't know what their blood pressure would be or their salary would be. I mean, it, it exists. I mean, that we could think that, 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 you know, if they had gotten intervention, they would have a Y1 value, but we just don't know it. So we don't have that information. What else do we have? We have the following information. We know the value of y0 for those people who did not get the intervention. We know that. We do not know the value of y0 for the people who did get the intervention. So this would be the value of, say, if you take a person who actually got education, what would their salary have been if they had not received education? We don't know that. So we have these two pieces of information. That's something we have. We do not have this. And in order to estimate this, we would need all four pieces of information. And we don't have that. So that illustrates or shows you the basic problem we deal with in causal inference. Now, given this problem, the only way to make progress would be to make some assumptions or, or collect some other information that could actually break this dependence we have between the selection mechanism, that is whether you get treatment or not, and the outcome we have here. So we need to find some way of collecting like or, or comparing like to like basically. And that's the basic challenge we're going to try to face with some of the methods in the next lectures.